what's going on here. This is supposed to be an egg. What is it? It's a balloon stuck in a piece of cardboard that has a hole in it. It's taped there and I'm putting coats of plaster of Paris onto it until we can get it to be like an egg. It's to put a present in for my little niece. Plaster of Paris is relatively quick in, it, in its setup and it will form like a thin hard shell. This is the first coat. I'm hoping that subsequent coats number two and three will be more runny and hopefully it will be perfect and hard and thin for us to fit the gift inside of it and give it to her to break apart the egg. I will report back with how well it worked. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and it's starting to solidify. So I'll include you in the second coat. Plaster of Paris is typically mixed with one part cold water to two parts plaster of Paris. So in this, in order to cover a full-sized balloon, I'm using 100 milliliters of cold water and 200 milliliters of the powder. I'm putting it on with a paintbrush and I'm mixing it with just a margin trowel and this is a cut plastic paint can. I already put the water in and now it's time for this stuff. I'm trying to be really close. That should be good. At first it seems like it's too runny. It'll be like hmm, like milkshake. Not even milkshake. It's not even that thick at first and you'll think that you're doing something wrong. But over time it solidifies. So this part, the mixing, I'll give it probably three or four minutes, which you don't need to watch, so I'll see you in a little bit. The product is pretty easy to work with. You can feel a long time in advance that it's starting to, to solidify. And obviously the earlier I apply it, the more runny it will be. And you could do as many coats as you want. I have never done this before, but I'm expecting that maybe three will give me a nice brittle shell. But again, it depends when you're applying it. If I wait until it's thick, then I can apply it more like a, a, a mortar. I could actually trowel it on with using the margin trowel, but I don't want to do that. Also, eggshells are smooth, so the runnier it is, probably the more realistic it will look as, uh, with respect to it looking like an egg. But as a typical rule, I guess you should build up coats first, making it thicker at first, and then applying thinner coats later. That is, if I were really trying to make this more than just an Easter-themed pinata. <laughs> It's just going to be destroyed. All right, I'm back. This is coat number three. Go ahead, take a walk around and take a look at it from every side. I'm not going to pre pretend to be a professional here. This is a totally experimental, but it seems to be working. Some cracks developed in it. You'll see them on this side if you look close. I think those are because the ambient air temperature is cold in here. And I ran the heater. So I think the air inside the balloon was cold. And as the heater heated up the room, I think the gas inside expanded and it caused it to crack. So if you keep the air temperature reasonably consistent, I don't think you'll have a problem with it. The only real problem I'm expecting with this is how am I going to burst the balloon later without breaking the shell? <laughs> because I don't want to give it to a, 
a five or six year old while the balloon is still inside because it has the potential to, you know, there's some stored energy in the balloon and it could rupture and send egg fragments everywhere. <laughs> so we want to, we want to tone that down a bit and remove the balloon somehow first. Okay, it's been about, what, 45 minutes? You can handle it. It's light, it kind of feels like one of those inflatable balls that you would get at, the, at Walmart. And now cross your fingers, we're in a hurry, we're really pressed for time. I don't know how well it's going to work. I expect it to be fragile, and ideally I would want to give it more time and more coats, but this is totally prototyping. I'm going to put a pin in right here, and hopefully that will let it out slowly without it exploding. Okay, maybe a little faster than that. Jeez. That's scary. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, I licked it to moisten it. There we go. There's a crack there. But the rest of it seems intact. Again, that was three coats. Maybe I would think four or five would be in order, ideally, if you had time. But this is now or never. I don't know if you can make this out, but the balloon has definitely separated from the inside of the plaster, and it's still supporting itself. So, as far as a proof of concept is concerned, I think this works. I'm going to cut away this tape. Well, okay, I guess I don't even have to. Yes, it definitely works, and it just broke. I didn't wait long enough. We probably need to wait longer. Wow, it's really cool inside, though. I think in order to save it, we could probably recode it right now, as it is. It, because this crack really needs to be repaired. Look at that. I'm going to attempt to repair a crack, so take a look at this. It's pretty considerable. If you take your time, you shouldn't get anything like this. Here's my plan. I'm going to take strips of toilet paper, soak them in plaster of Paris, and then make a bandage. Kind of like a paper mache sort of bandage. And then we'll cover it with more plaster of Paris. This is coat number four, by the way. It's worth mentioning that I probably should have left the balloon in place for as long as I could have. I was really curious, though, to see if it would work. So now that you know that it works, don't make the same mistake, don't get antsy. leave the balloon alone, it separates quite nicely. That does remind me of paper mache. I guess it kind of is. All right, I lost my crack. There it is. missed. This is double ply toilet paper. I think I would prefer if it were single. Uh, well, you get the idea. Well, I'm afraid we didn't make our deadline. 
because we have to go and give this to my niece. But the idea is sound, and it looks as though we would have got away with it if I just would have had more time to think about it in prototype. It was just too last minute. I didn't think about it until um, the wee hours of the morning. But I have some closing thoughts. So let me relate what I've learned so that I'll be ready in time next year. The crack repair definitely works. And it's worth mentioning that Plaster of Paris is very soft, so this can be sanded. You could make something that looks like a prop replica of an egg using this process. Especially if you test different balloons for their elliptical shapes. This balloon wasn't particularly egg looking, but it's not bad. Um, it's very convincing. Construction notes. You can see through it. Notice that there are light spots. While you're painting over in the third and fourth coats, it's easy to see where you need to add more material. And obviously you can build this up as much as you want. I think having done this, that probably somewhere around five or six coats would be optimum for giving this to a kid and letting them break it open. Okay, another point. The cardboard circle didn't work so well because the cardboard starts to imbibe water and curl. A better method would be to use foam, snow foam, like polystyrene foam, something like that. Cut a circle and then you could put the plaster right to the foam and just leave it as part of the display. Once you turn it upside down, then you could decorate around the base of the hole and uh, this ugly part with maybe that Easter grass stuff that gets all over the house. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I can think of anything else. I think I'm ready to try it again for next year now, given what I've learned. And that's why I video document the experience. We never finished the project, but I believe that you can pull it off. I really do think it can be done. We were having a discussion about how you could make the entire egg. By the way, this is a different project that I've built. I will post a link at the end. If you pretend that this is the egg and you blow a balloon up inside, then you could maybe rotate the balloon so that the knot was out of the way and then finish plastering the top. But it's tough to, it would be tough to do it because the present has to be inside. It's a puzzle. If you have any ideas on how to go about it, I would be interested to hear them. But if you do just want to make the egg partial, as I did in the video, you need a good base. So if you find a donut shape, what's known as a torus, you could build it on that. They sell them at the craft store in foam. It's called a foam wreath. And that would be an excellent base that you could make Easter themed. And I'm sure you can pull it off. So, good luck, and thanks for joining me.